Uh, hi, uh, we just saw that you happen to have two. Hi, we just happen to see that you two. Oh, oh God, are you okay? Me. <laughs> Honey. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> are you sure you need to have a meal or did you just finish one? Oh, wow. Please don't be rude to my friend. He's going through a lot right now. Yeah, man. Jesus, so I had a little burp accident. Sorry. Sorry. Just, yeah, I don't know if you know, but uh, the two of us would like to have dinner at your uh, restaurant. Yeah, I don't know if you know, but that's why we're here. The two of us would like to have some eggshell dinner, 15 of them. And we see that there are two seats available in the front. And again, please don't reference my friend's issues with burping or anything. We're, <laughs> he's really going through a lot right now. And the fact that you would even be rude is, is making me want to walk out of here. But I also want those goddamn yes. eggshell foods. Yes, well, I do see that there are two tables, uh, one table, and it's unseasonably cold. And since I am currently working this restaurant oh. job, because they canceled Downton Abbey the next generation. I, now I'm embarrassed because I think I, I thought I recognized you. You're an actor. Yes, yes, my name was Ass, Ass, Ass John. Ass John. Come sit here. Uh, and here, take these blankets. Ooh. Warm, Warm. furry blankets yeah. made of mohair. Thank you. A little crummy. And, <laughs> They've got crumbs all over them. Yes, well, the last people who left, uh, we didn't get a chance to shake them up. But since didn't you're so insistent That's true. on sitting down, you can sit here. Thank you. Beggars can't be choosers. Thank you. I don't want to call you Ask John because I know that's just your um, character. Sorry we got off on the wrong foot. I, I'm sure it's really, really hard to be a working, struggling actor in this city. Uh, yes, yeah. of course it is. It's incredibly difficult. Oh. My original name is Checkers the Dog. What? My parents were huge fans of Richard Nixon. And when Richard Nixon purchased that dog yes. that made such a stink that they had to have the vice president give a public address mm. on television yes. about his dog Checkers, my parents over in jolly old England yeah. were so, they loved him so much they said, well we can't name you Richard Nixon Okay. so they named you so, Checkers the Dog yes, God. Checkers the Dog so did you go by Checkers the Dog or did you, do, do we call you Check? I, I, I don't know no, call no. me The oh, alright that's this the one I took I the. feel like you, you've had a hard you've had a hard time and I'm I've had sure a very hard time let me turn up this Heater for you. Nice. Ooh, Your nice. first egg will be coming out soon. Thank you so much, the. Thanks, the. Thanks, the. God. I don't. What it was so fucking weird. I this know. City. <laughs> Get out of here. You know what I mean? Like, go back. He's obviously not happy here. You obviously hate it. You're being rude to us just because you burped and then he immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And, hey, listen. It's disgusting no, that no, I burped. No, 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 no. I know. I, I just. I'm having a lot of gastric Who? issues and I know, stuff I like know. that. You're but you know, you gotta. You gotta. I wish I was on Downton Abbey, the next generation. I know. <laughs> <that's>... <laughs> oh, I can't get it together. I can't get it together. No. I'm sneezing. <laughs> I'm burping. I think, this, I think that this heater is too hot. It's I really know. I, actually, I was just feeling like my hair is being a little yeah. singed. Yeah. Oh, my oh. God. I know. Okay. Here's your first egg. Oh. And the? here's a tissue for you, sir. You don't need to say that. Sorry, but you're being so judgmental every time you talk to my friend. I am immunocompromised. Okay, I, we all are. Uh, I'm more so. Okay, all right. Well, luckily we're outside, so... Fine, fine. This egg is a ris truffle risotto Yum. with shaved pork belly. Mm. There's been marinated teriyaki sauce. Yum. It is... Oh, oh. <laughs> no, you do not... <laughs> Oh my, I'm so... Ooh, ooh, looks like someone else is burping duty. And we're, <laughs> and we're not judging you. We're saying, oh, yeah, get it out. The... You sure this food makes me sick. This makes me sick. I've got to go. Bye, checkers. Oh. Wow. 
What a ringing endorsement for the fucking amuse bouche. What? This place is supposed to be great, and he's literally saying the food makes him sick over and over again. <laughs> he's like a fucking diner waiter. We're on Larchmont. I mean, he should be so lucky. Know. You know what I mean? I know. Oh, I can't wait to go to Jamba Juice and order after the secret menu after this. <laughs> Oh my god, their secret menu. I feel like nobody knows about it. Okay, wait, wait, wait. We were saying. Okay, so. Oh, the heat's making me sneeze. I know. Oh, that's what it is. Do you oh, can you get up and adjust the. Yeah, yeah. Just adjust the thing. Yeah. For... Sure. sure. Oh, it's high up here. Ugh. Just get it. Yeah. There you go. Uh, oh, god. Oh, oh, god. Wait. You're blanking. You're on fire. Oh, my god. You're, You're on fire. fire. You're on fire. Come on. Oh, Come god. On. You're on fire. What you gonna do when the world comes tumbling down? What you gonna do when your world comes tumbling down? What you gonna do when you're looking there's no one around? Are you gonna run? Where you gonna hide? Yeah, yeah, what you gonna do? From Wondery, I'm Tony Atamanik, and this is Don't Panic. The show that explores all the most ridiculous, unrealistic, worst-case scenario situations that couldn't possibly happen to you in real life because, come on, baby, light my fire. What if they did actually happen to you in real life? My guest is currently on fire! But not to worry, magnificent listeners of Don't Panic, by the end of the show, me and my guest, the incredible Darcy Carden, will find the best way to survive being set ablaze. Speaking of Darcy Carden, you know her from Barry, Broad City, and the good place to name just a few. But mere seconds ago, she was in a very bad place because she just caught on fire. Now, my first question is, have you ever caught on fire in any way? The only thing I've ever done is, is held a match too long and it, it burned, burned your my finger. finger. That, like as a kid, you know, like learning Are that lesson. Are you a lesson. burns or a cuts person? Like, do you feel like you've cut yourself more than you've burned yourself in your life? I've burned myself so many times on like um, curling irons and straightening uh, irons and stuff like that. Like, I think in high school, I always had some sort of scab on my neck or forehead from a curling iron really at interesting all times. are you yes. more are you naturally curly or naturally straight so i'm so curly really yes i'm really curly but in a um in an in sort of um what like like it's uneven it's wavy on top oh, it's yeah. really curly on bottom you know my greek blood's coming through so what do you think you do you you're in you are like lit a fire like okay. you've lit a flame you're, okay. It's not just your hair. It's like you are on fire. So okay. what do you think you do? What are your steps? I think like I'm going back to sort of like elementary mm-hmm. school. And I think it's stop, drop, and roll is the, is what I've yes. learned. So I think I get on the floor and roll around. And maybe if I'm able to scream out, I ask somebody, I gently ask somebody to, um, you know, like put their jacket on me or a blanket or something. I don't know how you would say that in the moment. Like, pat me down. <laughs> pat me. Pat me. <laughs> fucking pat me. <laughs> what if Padma Lakshmi just showed up out of nowhere? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, how can I help? <laughs> um, but I think I think all you could do would be to roll around. Maybe like sort of mummy up your arms. Like get in, not a ball, but like a straight yes. line and just roll back and forth. Yes. What do you think would be the period of time... <laughs> From when you kind of realize you're on fire to where you're engulfed in flames. Okay. How much can you keep your mind together before you're just a bundle of nerves acting on instinct? I think every version of catching on fire, like um, house fires or whatever, any any fire, yes. I think is much yes. faster than we think it is, right? Because I think there's yeah, always this true. feeling of like, oh, I could get out of the house or I could like see the fire coming or whatever. But I think they're really, really fast. And I guess it's d- depending on anything flammable or wind or anything like that. But I can keep cool under pressure. Okay, good. If there's like an injury or something, I can, I, I feel like my, I'm like, okay, okay. Yes. What are we going to do? Okay. But also I've had a couple of situations where I, where I panic or, you know, almost have like a panic attack. So I can't count on my cool head, like a hyperventilating type of thing. Do you shake? Yeah. When I have a panic attack in a bad situation where I know I've got, you know, when you like, I know I have to handle something yes, right now. Yes. I have no choice but to handle something right now. Yeah. What physically happens in you? I hyperventilate, I guess. Wait, it, only yeah. when I'm panicking, 
right? So, yeah, yeah. so that I'm trying to think. Yeah, I bet I do shake, but I can't catch my breath. Well, you're really not going to catch your breath when you're on fire, Darcy. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I won. Yeah. Okay. So, also, by the way, listening to the podcast, I've thought about your podcast. I've thought about this because. Every new panic situation, I think, what would I do if I was, you know, like whatever, whatever the situation is. And I sometimes think that I would give a, I would be like, take me, take me. Like I, 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 I worry that I would not fight back in whatever the situation. I would just be like, and I'm dead. I'm done. Take me. Lord, take me. <laughs> I agree with you because this New Year's Eve, I was cooking and I, I had a panic attack while I was cooking and uh, it was, it was induced based on, I had a little, I had a little pot, okay. which I don't smoke right, anymore. Right, right. And I had a little pot for new year's Eve and my heart rate went to like a mm. 180, yeah. like really crazy. Yeah. So I looked at my wife and I went, I'm going upstairs to lie down. She went, okay. Yeah. And I just like left everything. On oh, the you were cooking. Stove. Yeah. Yeah. I was like cooking <laughs> and I went, I turned the burners off and I went upstairs, laid down. And I was like, oh, God, am I having a heart attack? And I was lying there and I was like, I won't tell anybody. I think I'll just either I guess I'll just have it and die. (laughs) And I just was up in the bed going, I guess I'll just die. Yeah, it's happening. So I I get what you're saying, which is like, I don't know how much I would really fight in a situation. The the, You know, there's like the, the natural disaster type of fighting back, but then also like for me, I would say one of my biggest sort of consistent fears is an intruder oh, coming in. God. And yes. like that, I have really sort of thought through like the reality of what that would be like. And I don't think I would have the guts. I feel like I'm like a tough bitch, but I don't feel like I would have the strength to fight back. I think I would, it would be take me. It would just be, I mean, I shouldn't be saying yeah. this on a fucking podcast. <laughs> Come into my house, people. <laughs> I'm basically inviting death right now. <laughs> Just kidding. I have so many guns and knives and I would kill whoever walks in. <laughs> blowtorch. I have a blowtorch. <laughs> yeah. You know, I can't believe you're saying this because I don't know why this, it's just bizarre that you're saying this. Okay. So the other night I was, uh, I was watching Dexter. Yeah, you were. And my wife was already asleep and I, sh- I have a good, protocol of shutting down the house and we you know we live in new york so i put blackout curtains i shut those at night so no one can peer in the house on the porch Mm -hmm, or whatever mm -hmm. it's probably a little paranoid whatever and i check the ring and then i go to sleep and i heard something on the porch so i checked the ring and there was a very stumbly drunken guy Mm -hmm. who was walking up the street and he had like i think probably fallen into the like fence in front of our house okay he kept going but my mind started running and as I'm locking up, I'm like, so I don't want anyone to come in this house. And I'm like, what would I do? And I've run the scenario a million times, Yeah. but I just went through this like two nights ago yeah. where yeah. as I was going to bed, I kept being like, should I check the door again? Should I? And I had this thought, which was if someone came in the house and I could like get to the stairs before, because I have a baseball bat. Next yeah, to my bedroom same. door. We call it the thumper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do. We really? Say. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, is I've, you know, that's, and I, but the, I, I go, well, this is what I would use. But then I think about it and go, I don't know if I've ever really punched anybody. And totally. I start to think exactly. like, would I have the guts to hurt somebody? Like, would I, would I be able to hurt them? Or would I be like, no, 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 don't come up. <laughs> yeah. Yes, totally. No, no. Yeah. And actually, as you're saying that, I, I can feel my body. Okay. In situations where I've seen violence in front of me, a fight or something like that, my body sort of freezes up, like almost yes. paralyzes. It almost like locks up. And I wonder if that's what it would do. If it would just, um, if, if, you know, whatever it is. It, it, if someone came in or whatever, if I would just sort of walk up again, I have a blowtorch by the bed. Don't come in my yeah, house. Yeah. Listeners. <laughs> I have a baseball bat and I, we have a moat, uh, alligators. Yeah. yeah I have poison gas that sprays at the yes. front of the door. Actually yeah. same. My Jason and I have become immune to it, but anyone else that we'll comes die. in would, would immediately die. Yeah. So you yeah. think, so you roll um, around on the ground. You, okay, yeah, yeah. um, do you think you'd grab for water if you have anyone else with you, 
you're in, yeah. you're obviously in such a better place because I feel like someone else above you helping is going to, is the difference between maybe surviving and not. But let's assume that we're by ourselves. If there's a blanket or a rug or anything that you're rolling near or on, I think, you know, sort of like twisting yourself into that would maybe, or maybe yes. that would just fucking snuff you out faster. You might want to throw a blanket on yeah. yourself. Yeah. The thing with a fire is it feeds off of oxygen. So you want to cut right. the oxygen, right? which is why you would, would roll. My fear would be if I started rolling on the ground and it wasn't going out, I don't know what I would do. Yeah. I feel like I it's like baking soda, salt. Right. Feels like powders, sands are I think. So can you see yourself like okay, you catch fire, you go to the ground, you're rolling. It's yeah. long enough that you're like, oh, this isn't working. So you think you could get up and run to the kitchen or something, or even just reach for I I worry that you would just be I would take my clothes off. I would oh, try yeah. to I would try to take my clothes off, I think. And then you, I think that's what I would do. If it wasn't going out, yeah. I would I would be like, I have a limited amount of time before my body starts to not work. Right. So I need to try to at least get these clothes right. off. And then you would just wiggle your like your butt out of the pants and then you would die and you would die with your fucking butt and dick out. That's all. <laughs> You're naked. And you piss and shit <laughs> when that happens. So you'd be clothed, burnt to a crisp, but just <laughs> naked butt and dick and shit and piss out. <laughs> Humiliating. Don't yeah. come in here. <laughs> um yeah i think okay so you said it, the other thing is i'm just not i'm so um how do i say dumb about like science shit so what if you grabbed for something let's say baking soda and or the what if you grab for something that turns out to be super flammable i don't know what's flammable and what's not i feel like the big one is that water is not the best. Right. I, I feel like there's something Powdery. in me that's saying that water isn't the thing. Right. Like the 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 fire extinguisher is not full of water. It's full of like white yes. foamy stuff. Yeah. Well, I guess if you got so let's say you're cooking, and oil gets on you, yeah. flame, and it's also on fire. Yeah. <clears throat> I think you're definitely not supposed to use water. I think though. you're right. Something about oil and water. I mean, and also you know obviously. If we could reach for the fire extinguisher, we would do that. But let's assume that we don't have that in this situation. So I think we're in the kitchen. We're grabbing for towels. We're grabbing for dish towels. We kind of do that thing, you know, pat, pat, pat. We, yes. we get on the ground and roll. You'd have to roll to the ground immediately, right? Yeah. As you said. You'd probably roll out of that blanket. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's mohair. Right. It depends on the blanket. You don't want a flammable blanket on you. Then it's just about burns. Then it's about understanding what your burn level is. And then also, <clears throat> isn't there something about like smoke into inhalation and, and like passing out? Oh yeah, I mean, if I think if you're burning to the degree where you're smoking, <laughs> then, then we're going to worry we're about gone. smoke we're inhalation okay, okay, okay. being your problem. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, if it's your own smoke that you're inhaling, <laughs> what what is it when you're like in a <clears throat> a house fire? Isn't it like? Well, then that's that's where you have to get to the ground, right? Because if but you still have to get to the ground if you're on fire. The main thing. If we, if any children are listening, the main thing yes. we're telling you is get, if you're in, if you're on fire in any way, shape or form, you drop to the ground, you roll around, you stop, drop and roll. You stop. Yeah. You got to stop, drop and roll. Yeah. Kids, you hear that? Kids, are you listening? You little kids. fuckers. Hello, kids. Hello, children. Are you listening? Are you listening to Daddy Tony? <laughs> so for 15 seconds, you're just like rolling around on the ground going, oh my God. I think like, maybe this is so universal. Like maybe this is everybody's fear, but I think my my biggest fear with almost every kind of death, but yes. especially any kind of violent death, a car crash, a plane crash, anything, is the like, you know, the seconds before. What what happened, yes. you know, the, almost even more than the pain, but like the those 20 to five seconds, whatever it is, before knowing that it's happening. Like that, I think that's what is like my, maybe my biggest fear. Ooh! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's the freaky. shark coming up, any of that, like any any situation where, other than sweetly passing on in your in your fucking yeah. sleep, so it's more of sort of fearing the fact that you've just lost total control of the of the situation. Yeah, yeah. you're reminded of your absolute lack of yes. control. I the, every once in a while, this pops into my head. This sort of like the reality of what it would feel like to get hit with like a tsunami wave, or the reality of what it would feel like yeah. if someone walked into your bedroom in the middle of the night. Whatever it is, like oh. like sometimes you're just kind of thinking about it, but sometimes that's like my brain actually 
is like, oh, that's oh, yeah. exactly what it would feel like. Ooh, I, I, I really am like a. Oh, the person in the room. I mean, when you talk about that one, you that, that return. It's like I, I would say there's not a night that doesn't go by that I don't run all the versions of what do I do? How quickly can I get awake? Mm -hmm. How can we escape upstairs yeah. since there's only one door exit from our house? So how do we go off the porch? Same. Do we just risk dropping onto right. the car right. and injuring ourselves? Like Same, 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 same. So what is the thing that is the furthest back one that you can still kind of go, man, that kind of freaks me out even now? I was like a really happy kid, a really like happy, well-rounded kid. But I had fear. I had so much fear about I, I had nightmares that would wake me up. I'd sl I slept in my parents' bedroom, like I would say more often than not. And I'm not getting into high school, just on their oh, floor. Wow. My mom said, would say, make a nest. I wouldn't sleep in the bed with them. She'd say, make a nest. And I would like put it on the floor. On the floor. Yeah, yeah. The reoccurring dream I had was, and it was as sad as it was scary, was like my sister Lainey and I were in an orphanage. It was a Dungeness sort of orphanage. Dungeness? Is yeah. that just a crab or is that? That's a crab, a but it can be also Can you understand? I mean, Dungeness, like, 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 let's say like <laughs> yes, hellish, hellish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you were living, you and your sister were in an orphanage in a giant crab. <laughs> Which is so scary. We were in a very scary prison-like orphanage. And the reoccurring dream was just that my parents would come and adopt her and then a sort of rotating cast of like Dracula and Mrs. Frankenstein or whatever her name, you know, like diff different monsters. Mrs. Frankenstein. Sure. I mean, he could have gotten married. Wait, who am I thinking of? You mean Bride like, of Frankenstein? Yes, yes. The bride, the bride, the bride. She's got to be Mrs. at some point. She goes from sweet little hot, sexy bride of Frankenstein to Mrs. at some point. Old Mrs. Frankenstein. Just different monsters would adopt me. So I would be, oh. hold. they would be holding me. And I would be watching my parents and my sister literally skipping down the street. Like I remember one dream where they were just holding her hands and they were skipping down the street. And I was not screaming or crying, but I was like settling into my new reality of like, yes. yeah, of just like, fuck, I got, this is my mom and dad now. Like, I'm so scared. I don't want to upset them. So I was just sort of like being held. But that was like the reoccurring. That's that was such a fascinating dream. Yeah. Yeah. Because it links in a way to what you said about, I don't know if I would really do anything or would oh, I just yeah. accept it. Totally. It connects the, the idea that you, even at that age, were like, I will adapt. I just have to adapt to this being the new circumstance. Oh, interesting. oh my God. I just got a bit of a chill hearing that. And it's, and it's great yeah. because when you think about it, the nightmare, the things we experience, especially when we're younger, is all the script writing for our brain yeah. for how we're going to function and deal. Yeah. See, I love nightmares because nightmares to me are preparation. They're scenario. Yeah. They're, they're the brain going, I need to run these scenarios. I need to be yeah, prepared. Totally. I feel like my brain is at its best in my dreams. I'm never smarter than in my dreams. Like sometimes yeah. I'll wake up or even in the dream, this isn't nightmares necessarily, but the story that my dream will tell me, even with like maybe a spoiler or not a spoiler, like a, a, a twist ending, and yeah, then when yeah. I wake up and think about it, I'm like, damn, I came up with that. Good for me. Yeah. I remember a dream. There was a lot of like, not exactly night terrors, but waking up and not being able to shake it for so long. I remember a dream where yeah. I think it was maybe the sun, the sun character from like Mario Brothers 2 or something. It's some desert level, if you can picture that. Just like a kind of computery yeah. sun. Yes. And <laughs> he had a whip and he was whipping me. <laughs> all right not in a, not in a hot way well hot because it was the sun <laughs> nothing sexy about it it was really scary <laughs> i don't think i've ever had a dream of being whipped that's so that's such a specific yes but what i remember wow. is waking up and screaming for my mom and her this is the memory i wonder if she'd be like i didn't do this her saying like come on come into the room and me just being paralyzed like thinking the sun and the whip were in the hallway, like just couldn't quite wake up. And and I still kind of have that. Interesting. Yeah. Just sort of like, I can't wake up. I need to, in my adult life, I've, I've learned you just, I have to like get up, walk around. Yeah. Like I can't just stand that. You said you had a very well-rounded childhood and I feel like even with, I had a lot of bumps, but I still had a very, I don't like look at my childhood as like not great. Right. What things did bring you like anxiety or panic as a kid 
into your young adulthood. I guess I would say, is there a marquee situation from that time that you're like, man, this was the most like in panic I was Mm -hmm. in? For being as well-rounded and like grounded as I think I am, Mm -hmm. I have some like pretty mega phobias, (laughs) like ones that, you know, don't, that, that I could hear a million times, like a shark isn't going to get you in the pool or like the spider isn't going to bite you or whatever. Like I know, I know all of the realities of them, but the answers, the answers. That yeah. 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 I had like a, a shark in the pool phobia into college, wow. into college. And it was in the pool, in, in the pool, not the, like in a, no, a in body the of water pool. And by the way, I played water polo. I think I have an overactive imagination and I could psych myself out. I'd be like, wouldn't it be crazy if a, if a shark sw- swam out of that drain? And then all of a sudden it's like, I cannot shake that thought and I have to yes. book it back to the shallow end and get out of the pool or whatever. And I did sit yes. down with a therapist at one point and she was like, she was literally like, get over it. And I was like, yeah, that is good advice. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> she's like, just get over that one. It is a weird dance in your own. This is how I hear it. And I wonder how you feel it, where it's like you bring something up from the depths yes. and you put it into your mind, uh, whether you do it, or it's like an automatic feeding system. And it feeds this thing yes. to you that you then go, oh, whoa. And you think about it for a moment, but then you're thinking about it, mat- like makes it material. Totally. And then you just suddenly have this, well, what if 1% chance, like it's possible. And then you start running yourself out where you bring it into the world. Right. A hundred percent. See, to me, that's a phobia. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's nothing crazy about it because you're doing a mental dance with yourself. Right. Right. Where you bring something up and then you, and then it takes you. Yeah. Right. Where do you feel it in your body? Mm, when I you think feel pa- fear, pain, panic, where do you feel it in your body? Do you think? It's like um, upper, it's like chesty, heady, you know, it's sort of like a, almost like cold woozy. <laughs> yeah. Know? Do you yeah. feel at the tops of your arms ever? I do. Yeah. That's yeah, a totally. big thing for me is when I feel this, if I feel it with someone, like automatically, yeah. that I, a stranger or whatever, yeah. I I Run. get the hell yeah. away. Oh, interesting. Because I just trust that this knows better than I do. That's really interesting. What's up? If I was ever in the car by myself, so obviously this is like 16 and above, I would, I could so easily convince myself someone was in the back seat. Or a weird one, a really weird one is that there was somebody under my car when it was parked. So I'd have to take a gigantic step to get into the car. Otherwise they were going to like slash my ankles. This is like into my adulthood. So wow. now as a real adult, yes, I can still have those feelings, but I can, I can also sort of go like the feeling is real, but then I can go like, come on, come on, you got this. Like, yeah, you yeah. know, there's not somebody in the fucking backseat or whatever, or, yeah. you know, turning off the light down the hall, which used to be like run down the hall. And now as an adult, I can be like, come on, like a little bit of more of like a ha ha ha, you know, this isn't yeah, real, yeah. but it's still yeah. there. Do you go, I don't want to lose you completely because. Like, I want to make sure, like, I have my things I do and I have to do them. I have to check the key that the keys aren't in the door. Yeah. I have to. Do I really have to? Probably not. But because I've left the keys in the door enough times, because I've brought the dog back and forgot to lock yeah. it and just shut the door because yeah. I was in a rush. Uh, I have to check the gas every night and make sure all the knobs are off. I don't think that's crazy because I've left the gas on. Right, before. right, right. So someone else might go, that's a little obsessive. But you have, it's like learn, you've learned that you need to do that. Well, also, isn't there a part of you, do you ever have moments where you go, man, I like how safe I am, like it, like on your sofa or something, yeah. you know, when you're just like, you're curled up, like you're fully curled up. You're like, you're in your home yeah. and you go in some ways, no matter what you do in your life, you go, this is the best experience possible right now whatever that i'm in my space comfortable i'm safe i'm comfortable and all i want is for nothing to threaten this yeah right yeah and then immediately for me comes the flood of every possible thing that could threaten yeah and i've had to work on beating that back totally my that happens for me too but not always like not it's not consistent it's not like every time i feel comfortable then the bad thoughts come 
So I wonder what I, I'm, I wonder when it, what's going on with me when it does, like, why would I sometimes be able to let it out of my mind? And sometimes it, you know, it spins. Do you think that uh, our choosing improv as a pursuit, yeah, which is probably the most panic inducing oh, thing that someone can do. Right. Uh, I know you taught, I, you taught, right? I, t- I coached. Oh, you so, coached yeah, and I, yeah. I taught and coached and yeah. you see it, you know, you know, you're deep into it. You see it and you go, oh yeah, that's right. When you're really right new at this, there's a all these levels of pressure, yeah. right? Yeah. And yet this thing that we're still like, even when we did it in DC, yeah, we're yeah. still making things up. It's not right. like it changes. It's always resetting to zero right. when you do a show. There's it's always the, one nothing. of the few things where there's always nothing. Yeah. And yet I feel like I can walk out without any concern. I It's not that I don't have fear that it should be good. I mean, I have all the natural good performance stuff you want right. to have. Right. But I find it absolutely enjoyable. Me too. Whatever happens. And I feel it's so interesting that we pick, a, we pick this space to go, well, this is where I'm completely comfortable with it falling apart. That's right? so funny. I mean, we've been doing improv now for decades and i haven't really thought of it like that that i've sort of just taken for granted that i love it i've sort yeah. of just been like oh, i love it and people go people s- often say oh that would be my biggest fear or that would be you know i can't think of something that would make me more panicked or whatever and i and i think i just go like well not for me like for yeah. me i like it but it is interesting that we've chosen that to 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 do hundreds of thousands of billions of times of yes. nights whatever we've done so many shows yes. Where that's the choice. We decided to do that. No one forced us to do that. Um, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. What is that about? <laughs> Truly. What's your marquee um, panic right now? Like, what's the so? What are you? What, what am I afraid what, of? Right what are you now? doom scrolling? What's your? What's your? It could be doom scrolling. Whatever. What's your fear right now? It's so you know the the like big fears, the big like world fears are too. I, I can. I, I, this is not a good thing. I can shut those out. The big world fears, I can go, Ooh, not me, not for me, not for me, not for me. My fears are very in my own world. They're parents, yes. they're, you know, the big one that like I can't quite put into words as well as I'm feeling it all the time is like time passing. The, yeah. the like life, life slipping through the fingers of, yes. from, from like grandparents down to like baby nieces. You know what I mean? Just like, yeah watching and and i think it could be the age i'm at it could be like the years of covid where you know just watching that happen there's just something about where all of a sudden i was like oh it's going here it goes yeah yeah. yeah 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 um those are like the big the big ones that and that is actually in a way what keeps me up at night that that the like 4 a.m wake up where you're kind of like whatever that chemical is that's like running through you that makes you think bad thoughts it's not the 4 a.m wake up isn't usually like my house is going to catch on fire or you know, a monster is going to get me. It's the like, so it's, it has something to do with time passing. Yes. Partly that unlocks with age a little yeah. bit, which is, I think the brain starts to do it. Yeah. It starts, I think the consciousness has its, a, its own sort of growth that happens over time. Like the, you know, the way a muscle changes or your yeah. face changes or whatever. Yeah. I think the consciousness changes. So I think that that mm. is true. That time thing. I appreciate that one yeah. in particular especially in relationship to parents yeah. and then i think it comes to the story of your life yeah. and this probably depends on how close you are i think about the fact that there's going to be these very close people who i daily depend yeah. on and talk to who are going to exit as they should yeah like as part of existence as they this should is is. yeah and talk about it. and then the the grief is like, oh, okay, so now there's a certain amount of closeness that's just gone. Yeah. That now my partner, and my partner, as close as I am to them, did not know me as a child. Right, right. So there's only so much they can know. Right. So then to me, it's the winnowing of knowledge of self that's confirmed by other people to you. Right. And that just slowly slips. Yeah. Do you have siblings? I have a half sister okay. who I just have a, yeah. a, a texting relationship yeah. with. Yeah. You have siblings. I have siblings. And, and that's a benefit. It, it, there, for, for what we're talking about, I think yes. I mean, no, no, for yeah. everything, yes. I love my siblings so much. But, <laughs> but just for what we're talking about. Specifically, no. I mean, I I'm 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 
unnaturally close with my siblings. We talk too many times a day. I should, I should back off, make some friends. Um, <laughs> sometimes I am like, why do I want to hang out with them more than anyone else all the time? That, that I should, I should, I should take a year sabbatical from my siblings just to see what would happen with my life. Um, well, you know, maybe, but yeah. you know, people, other people aren't all they're cracked up to be. That's Darcy. true. But yeah, I, de- I, everything you just said, I totally, I feel so hard. I really do. And it's, and it's just a funny thing that you don't think about when you're, you know, 20 or below. It's just, it's just not, unless you do, no. unless you have a reason to. And that's the other thing is I haven't had, this is just like a, this is, again, this is very me specific. I haven't had a ton of death in my family. And all that makes me think is it's coming. All that yes. makes me think is, well, here it comes, you know, like, like, oh, lucky yeah. us, we haven't had a lot of cancer or I have a big close family, aunts, uncles, cousins, like we've been really safe and happy. And, um, yeah, all that makes me think is like, wow, it's going to be like just one after the other. Boom, 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 <laughs> it's going to be like a fucking body yeah, count yeah. when it happens. Okay. So we know how Darcy Carden thinks she'd survive being set on fire, but what do the experts say to do? What to do if your clothes catch fire? Okay. Get ready. Here I go. Because you need to stop. Mm -hmm. It's very important not to panic and run. Running fans the flames and increases the fire. Air, you were right. You were totally right. You were right because now you cover. Yes. Heat rises, so cover your... Oh, this is interesting. Neither of us thought of this. With your own hands. Cover your face with your hands to protect the delicate eyes and skin on the face to protect airways from the smoke. Okay. Uh, I would not think I of that. I would not. I mean, I, we might do that naturally. We might just... there. I, I, I have a feeling that in the moment... You, you we just, would we would just yeah. yeah we would cover our face so maybe that's God's way of protecting us. Now you drop okay yes. to the ground immediately, mm-hmm. which you said. Yeah. So ding 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 for Darcy. Ding 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 and a ding. Roll Hell roll yes. backwards and forwards on the flame. Look at that! By rolling on the flames, you starve them of oxygen and put out the fire. And a bystander such as me can assist by dousing the fire with water. Yes. Okay. Using a fire blanket, non flammable mat, blanket, or okay, and a water fire extinguisher, all red body. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Is the only type of fire extinguisher which can be safely used in this situation. Huh. Also, you don't want to spray someone with a foam, I guess. Okay, God, I wouldn't even know. I would just pick up the fucking fire extinguisher i wouldn't know what was in it oh my god quickly remove any clothing and jewelry from the burned area if the but, clothes are stuck to the skin do not remove them <laughs> oh, oh. peel you spend your time peeling your shirt off of your burned skin oh god and then you have to immediately treat the area with cool running water for 20 minutes don't use ice creams or ice cream oil oh. or assistance. <laughs> And then you need to seek medical attention. And then the same thing with treating a burn. Let's just go into this real quick just to learn about what times a burn, uh, burn, burn, burn. A burn is a word. Burn, burn, burn. Um, burn is a worm. A burn is a worm. Yeah, that's right. You're right. That's of course. Right. A, burn, a burn, a, a burn. A burn is, is a worm. worm. I love the B-52s. <laughs> How to treat a burn. Okay, so determining the degree of your burn. The figure out, well, first, I didn't know my burn was a Freemason. <laughs> Thank you. First. <laughs> so, okay. so first degree burns are most common. Red, slightly swollen, may not be, uh, may or may not be slight, uh, painful. I would just put aloe on that. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Now on, if you see on WikiHow here, we see our friends at the animations incredible. We have this cross section of skin Yeah, and we have what, got, what almost looks like a pizza pie. And the, the like chunk of skin that they're showing in the little, it looks good. It too. looks good. I don't know if that's a lasagna <laughs> or a cake, but I want to bite. I want to bite. Well, also, you, I like yeah. that in the animation that the hair fall, the hair coming out of the skin is curled in a way that seems like it's been singed. Like it, yeah, they went that far with the with this. They really went far with the detail. It also looks like this was an Italian or a Greek who suffered this <laughs> yes, burn. That's right. Now here we go. The pizza pie is turned into sort of a gross cookie. Yeah, a bit of a a bit of a red velvet. Chocolate. No hair. You no see, hair. there's no hair. It's just, it is, this is an overcooked lasagna. <laughs> Crunchy top. See, 
if you have a third degree burn, the third degree burns the most serious. These happen with the extended exposure to a hot object burn through all three layers of your skin, sometimes causing muscle, mm. fat, and bone damage. Mm. They look leathery and have a black or white appearance. God damn. I know. These burns can look wet Blech. because the rupture of the cells and protein leakage. That is disgusting. Oh, God. Okay, wait. Now, what's this cold one that we're seeing? This is a low temperature burn. This would be like Dexter cold blood. Okay. Cold blooded or right. I, whatever that was. Right. These are the burns that occur when your skin is exposed to low temperatures like snow or ice. Oh, weird. Okay, like ice burn, whatever that's called. Yeah, freezer, burn. Little, freezer, yeah, burn. freeze yeah. burn. Freeze burn. Yeah, freezer burn. Freezer burn. Hypothermia burn. Right. And then red, white, or black on the skin, a low temperature burn is still considered a burn because it damages the skin's mm. tissue layers. I wasn't, even, I wasn't even thinking about cold burns, of course. Ah, uh, well, how about this woman with this massive chemical burn on her face? Um, <laughs> she still looks great. She does look pretty good, yeah, actually. she looks really good. I don't know why she's eyeing some more chemicals <laughs> to drop on her face. <laughs> she's like, hmm, I can't resist. <laughs> okay, so now the question is, can we put together everything we just learned and use it to help us survive being set on fire? And just to recap, we're on Larchmont in Los Angeles. We're having a lovely multi-course meal at a place called Egg. We're animated. We're having fun. It's a little cold out there. And Darcy's mohair blanket catches on fire. Let's head back to the scene. Get down, roll, what, roll. Get on the ground. Go, get down, roll, <laughs> cover your face. Stop I, talking so much. This jacket is new. Right. I knew I should have gotten this light colored jacket. Oh, the please, chickers, chickers. Please Come. step off, please. Won't you step off? Step off. Don't be on fire on the balcony. Go to the sidewalk. Checkers, help us, please. God, no, actually, get the fuck out of here. Anthony, help me. Help me. Hold on. I'm, uh, I'm, I'll be right back. No. Okay, I'm moving. I'm moving. Hi. Hi. Can I get the secret menu? Um, I'll get the, uh, uh, I Which forget one? what it's called, like the you Fruit Loops. This, you know the secret menu? Welcome yes. to Jamba Juice. Okay, yeah, great, great, great. My friend's okay. on fire. I okay, need well, the... If you want the secret menu, you have to say the secret password. Oh, Jamba Juice is secret. Sing it right. Sing it right. Jamba Juice, Juice is, is secret. secret. Menu. Menu. Oh, good harmony. Oh, you're going to get it. Okay, hold Thank on. You. I have five people in line ahead of you, but you'll all be after that. No, 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 no. Here, right. here's $500. Oh my God, I've never seen this much money. I'm so poor. Of course you work at fucking <laughs> Jamba Juice. I'm 13. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. I don't secret. have time for this. I'm going to blend up your secret men, uh, secret shake, secret, what's it called again? <laughs> I'm secret menu shake, it's the Fruit Loops. Oh, yeah, yeah, Fruit Loops. Okay, hold on. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Uh, okay, I'm almost done blending. And... Do you need a father? What? I have one. Sorry. Okay. Okay, this here is... you go. I'm really Enjoy. looking at a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Oh god. Oh, fuck. oh god, that's so cold. Oh my god. I don't know. <laughs> that smoke. Woo! Boy, you're putting oh, up a lot of smoke. It's gonna make me oh. burp. Oh god. <laughs> Come on, you can get one going. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> my Word, you two offensive wretches! You are flaming. You're flaming. Don't call us flaming. Witch. Oh, <laughs> checkers! I we we demand the rest the of our dog. fourteen courses for free. Fine, you, sh you shall have it, and I will give you twelve of your courses in this egg cart. No, oh, cute. <laughs> That's such a cute way to display it. That's um, how we do takeout. Okay, I have to take my clothes off, I guess, just to make sure it's not going to, like, uh, adhere to my skin. So, can I Ooh, have that? yeah! <laughs> Looks like my plan worked! You wanted me as a sexual partner this whole time, you little freak. <laughs> That's right! Darcy Carden, thank you what? so much for doing the podcast. Thanks for doing the podcast. Thanks for you doing the podcast. I love Ooh. it. I've listened to all the episodes. I can't wait to listen to more. Be sure to follow us wherever you get your podcasts and you can watch our full podcast episodes on YouTube on the Wondery channel. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. 
goodbye. And remember that fear is what keeps us alive. Don't panic. Are you gonna run? Where you gonna hide? Yeah, yeah, what you gonna do?